Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to Surgery Dada Clinical Series. So today we have a interesting case, and the case is related to the head and neck section. Basically, there is a patient with us with a swelling over the left temporal, you can say, uh, over the left parotid a region, and the swelling is sought to be a pleomorphic adenoma. And uh, the FNA is done, but the FNA is not available with the patient. But the clinical signs and symptoms are typically suggestive of a pleomorphic adenoma. So uh, I would now ask my resident to present a brief case uh, scenario, clinical case scenario about this. Just a minute. Can you present uh, or tell me the history of this case? What and how was the swelling? Yes, sir. So the patient is a 37 year old male. He presented us with the uh, swelling in the parotid, left parotid region. So, uh, he, uh, the swelling came into his awareness only three years back. He is not sure when exactly the swelling started. But when he noticed it, it was very small in size. Later, over the la uh, period of last three years, it started growing. And now, uh, it as we, we can see, it has grown up to this much of size. Okay. So, uh, is it associated with any symptom of pain? Uh, the patient has, uh, uh, has no complaint of pain or any other symptoms. So, basically, if you see the tentative history that patient has given to me, is of a very small duration that is three years where the swelling has increased but the swelling was present way back and it was very small so it is increasing in size since last three years if you see the typical dimensions of the swelling this is the place where the swelling is normally whenever we talk about the swelling of a parotid this is the ear, ear lobe and if the superficial lobe of the parotid is involved so when we talk about the lobe, lower anatomy we have the superficial lobe and deep lobe two third of the parotid is involved in the superficial lobe if the deep lobe is involved in that case there will be medial shift of the tonsillar pillar so for that we have to go for an intraoral examination however if you see there is uh, you can i can feel on the consistency it's a well circumscribed but a nodular lesion so we can feel the nodularity that we typically see in a pleomorphic adenoma now when we talk about pleomorphic adenoma we also have to understand that it is encapsulated but at sides it is infiltrated or invaginated by pseudopods and that is why enucleation is impossible for them so what do you know about the parotico mesentric fascia? Can you tell me something about parotico, parotico mesentric fascia? The patty's fascia venous plane. No, that is not. Okay. So parotico mesentric fascia is the extension of the deep cervical fascia mm -hmm. which covers the pectoral, uh, the parotid and the masseter muscle and inserts in the zygoma. So if you try to mobilize it, mm -hmm. it will go laterally. It will come down, but it will not go up. Okay. And this is what is known as a standard curtain sign so curtain sign is very important thing to understand this remember whenever we are talking about the facial nerve <coughs> and its relation with the parotid so you know there it comes the then then we have to talk about the facial venous plane of patty where the you can say mandibular vein retromandibular vein and the, the facial uh, the nerve is going through <coughs> so what are the tests you can suggest to look for the facial nerve involvement uh, we can ask the patient to raise his eyebrows and uh, we can ask him to uh, close his eyes uh, and <coughs> and close his eyes tightly and we have to try to open it up and okay. see the okay. strength. So let us summarize it. Whenever we talk about the facial nerve, it has multiple branches. It has uh, the zygomatic branch, it has a buccinator branch, it has a cervical branch. So a <coughs> lot of uh, temporal branch, a lot of branches are there. So we have to see them in sequence. So if you talk about the temporal branch of the facial nerve, so you'll ask the patient to frown. Kya frown kari? Frown, frown. Yes. Achha. Try to close the eyes. So when you talk about frowning or you can say closing the eyes, we are going to check for the temporal innervation of this. And basically it is the orbicularis oculi and the corrugated supercilia. That is what. Then if you want to check the buccal, you can say innervation, ask the patient to puff the mouth. Aap puff kari. So you can see he can puff it. Can you whistle it? So when he is able to whistle, and can you smile? Extended smile. Yes, extended, extended. Okay. So when we talk about extended smile, what are we involving? We are involving the zygomaticus major and minor, which is also very good. It's normal. When you are doing the puffing, you are basically involving the buccinator. And along, along with that orbicularis. Now here we go for orbicularis oris also. So puffing it. And then 
ultimately we have to check for the cervical glands so platysma is involved can you extend this neck and stretch out this muscle ye gardan ko upar karke stretch out so you can see this is where the platysma is stretched and this is absolutely normal so facial nerve innervation is absolutely normal next is when you talk about the sensory component there are three important things that you have to ask and check out if the patient can feel the sensation of salt and sweet over the anterior two third can you feel the salt and sweet yeah. yes that's yeah, absolutely yeah. normal that yeah, you can yeah. now do you have any problem with excessive hearing of the sound like hyperacusis bahut zor zor se aapko awaaz aati ho no, no. so if hyperacusis is not there that means the nerve to stapedius mm -hmm. basically stapedius muscle that is also working fine kya aapko bahut zyada aankhon se pani vagera aata hai no so that's hyperlycrimation that is also not seen in this case so this is about the assessment whenever we talk about the facial nerve involvement it can be upper motor neuron lower motor neuron so can you tell me the difference between them what will you see in upper motor neuron versus lower um, motor okay so uh, in a lower motor neuron case the ipsilateral half of the face will be involved but the lower half of the face will be involved in an uh, upper, motor upper motor neuron, neuron issue <coughs> and the drooping will be more severe even the loss of wrinkles will be there in the lower motor neuron so let us talk about the approach to this case So now, when we talk about the approach to this case, the first line assessment that we do is a USD guided FNA is very important. In pleomorphic adenoma, in a long-standing pleomorphic adenoma, there may be D differentiation resulting into carcinoma development, and this is what is known as X pleomorphic adenoma carcinoma. Hundred percent conversion. This is known as carcinoma tosis. So, if there is fixity of the mass, if there is recent onset of increase in size and pain. if there is facial nerve involvement these are short short signs that it could be a malignancy <coughs> now when we try to approach these patients the first thing that we need to check is what is the fna is it benign versus malignant if it is benign then we have to look for the involvement of the site basically majority of them are involving the tail so tail is the lower pole of the superficial lobe and for them we go for superficial parotidectomy where we remove the entire superficial lobe exposing the branches of the facial nerve now there is a contradiction to this now people have argued that okay we cannot go for enucleation unnecessary exploration and you can say uh, doing the dissection around the nerve will lead to some level of neuropraxia and that is why now suprafacial extracapsular variety of suprafacial parotidectomy is done so you will try to dissect it open up the capsule just at the place where you see the lesion and you can go for a wide local excision so this helps you avoid even reaching or going to the facial nerve and minimizes the injury if it is a benign lesion involving both the lobes then we go for total parotidectomy but conservative when we talk about conservative it is nerve sparing and if this is a malignancy then you will have to go for radical parotidectomy which involves removal of the gland the fascia the masseter muscle along with that the lymph nodes if the facial nerve is involved the segment of the facial nerve has to be removed and followed by radiotherapy chemotherapy usually is not given for pleomorphic adenoma related cancers or any of the salivary gland cancers except the adeno and the sccs and the lymphomas now when we talk about the facial nerve in many cases the facial nerve might be injured during the surgery in that cases if it's a you can say a significant level of injury you will have to do the reconstruction using the nerve cable graft and the best is sural we can use lesser petrosal we can use greater petrosal we can use a greater auricular we can use auricular temporal there are so many things that we have to follow so this is a brief clinical synopsis about the pleomorphic adenoma or approach to parotid mass